at the conference organized by Samsung called SAFE on the future of electronics manufacturing, Raja Koduri, chief architect of Intel, delivered a wonderful keynote that illustrates the power of thinking in terms of jolting technologies. Raja provided a compelling picture for delivering a thousand-fold increase in the power of AI systems within the next five years. This translates in an average doubling over the course of these years every six months. But the way that he broke it down is completely different. Intel is not a totally vertically integrated company. It does depend on the effort of an entire rich ecosystem of participants, each contributing to Intel's ability to successfully deliver on its promises. And the advances that are needed are really breathtaking. In various parts of the electronics manufacturing process, in terms of what is the feature size and uh, what is the interconnectivity of the transistors, what is the topology, uh, meaning the way that the transistors are placed not only in two dimensions but in three dimensions in order to keep improving their power. What is the software that is used both to design, layout, but also to improve connectivity, communication, reduce power consumption, and many other ways. The presentation showed how each of these relatively independent components can be improved fourfold and since the improvement four times of each multiplies with the improvement of all the others four times four times four times four times four is a thousand and twenty four and that is the relatively simple elementary calculation to deliver at the end the thousandfold improvement. This is many times faster than Moore's law. And the opportunity is to make sure that the risks are mitigated and that the objective can be achieved because each of these components, of course, has its own set of challenges to overcome. And it may successfully do so or fail to achieve the full uh, objective of four times improvement. But for example, in software, there is a potential of doing much more than four times. So Raja is confident of the thousandfold improvement, and that is the confidence that he aimed to instill in all the ecosystem participants that were invited to believe in this objective themselves. Because whether we are talking about Moore's Law or the increasing acceleration of jolting technologies, these are not natural laws and they only happen as self-fulfilling prophecies. When thousands of engineers all around the world corralled by exciting perspective and ambitious objectives as it was the case of these, uh, this keynote are springing into action and they try out the various ways that they can deliver the improvements that are required. 
the cumulative effect is astonishing because we have already seen what um, really um, major performance improvements can achieve on various fields like face recognition, speech recognition, but also not only recognition, but synthesis, video synthesis, text synthesis. And we are seeing how complicated the picture that emerges is in the ways that the world is transforming as a consequence of these actions. AI is going to fully take advantage of this. Actually, uh, it is a classical picture like we are seeing in other areas, for example, in uh, the speed of internet connectivity. The more bandwidth is available, the more we want to use. For example, I'm already recording these videos in ultra high definition, 4K. A couple of years ago in Japan, well, in the stores they already had 8K television sets. Am I going to record the next uh, season of the context in 8K rather than 4K? Maybe, or maybe 16. And then, of course, some of that uh, resolution is thrown away uh, so that during the editing process uh, uh, there can be some panning or cropping as needed. But I am already streaming in HD, high definition, 1080p. Am I going to start streaming in ultra high definition in a year's time or two years time? And then in 8K and 16K? And you will ask yourself, well, what is all that resolution even needed for? And I can answer to you easily. It is, for example, needed for immersive virtual reality, which very simply and straight away doubles the resolution requirement because you want to feed each eye the maximum resolution available. So if you want to achieve the uh, ability uh, to have an immersive uh, experience that is high definition, you do need ultra high definition uh, uh, bandwidth uh, available and uh, that is the quantity of information that you want to, to, to send. So this is an example of expanding capabilities and expanding needs, tracking each other. AI is the same. The question that is still open, when are the models of neural networks going to start delivering a diminishing return on the increasing number of parameters with which we are training them and allowing them to deliver their magic. For the moment, it looks like the more we increase the number of parameters, the more capable the neural networks become. So there is a constant hunger in order to be able to do so. But we don't want and we don't need AI to be only centrally managed in the data centers. We can and will deliver AI on the edges as well. Already, the latest generations of uh, smartphones with their advanced software are capable of user-independent, large vocabulary, high performance speech recognition without internet connectivity on the phone itself. And the Intel keynote highlighted the fact that further advances in AI capabilities on the edge will require a massive increase in performance, which they are ready to match they are ready to ship in the course of the next four or five years. So Intel is completely on board 
with jolting technologies. Rather than matching the traditional speed of Moore's law doubling every two years, they are talking about doubling every six months on average over the course of the next five years in order to achieve the thousandfold increase in AI compute performance that um, is the rhythm and the goal and the corralling cry uh, to battle uh, for their entire ecosystem. So it is going to be fascinating to watch how this is going to come about. And of course, to watch how Intel's competitors, AMD, NVIDIA, ARM, are going to independently lay down their own jolting strategies. NVIDIA, for example, is talking about a doubling time of two months, not six. Is it going to be able to keep that self-fulfilling prophecy true over the course of several years? It is hard to wrap our heads around the implications, but one thing is sure. It is important to change the mindset. It is not enough to think about exponentials anymore. The increasing rate of acceleration of technology innovation as implemented in products and services across an entire industry has become the dominating paradigm. Jolting technologies must be understood, adopted, implemented in order to be able to lead over the course of the third decade of the 21st century.